On this episode of Locked on Jayhawks, we're previewing KU's semifinal game in the winner's bracket of Maui Invitational, Kansas Marquette, top five showdown in Honolulu. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Derek Johnson. Thanks for making Locked On Jayhawks your first listen every day. You can hear me as well on Rock Chalk Sports Talk Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence. And you can find us here with Locked On Jayhawks anywhere you get any of your podcasts. Like and subscribe to us on our YouTube page. Thank you to every day or tuning into each and every episode where you can catch yesterday's uh, recap on a brief episode for KU Chaminade. And that sets us up with Kansas Marquette, which we're previewing here in this one. Two top five teams in the AP poll. Marquette ranked 12th on Ken Palm, fourth in the AP poll. Kansas ranked in the top four on Ken Palm, ranked number one in the AP poll. Before we get into it, today's episode of the show is brought to you by Prize Picks. PrizePicks.com slash locked on college is where you can use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy with prize picks. So, this is uh, going to be a tough match. And, and I said coming into this that I thought, you know, Marquette, I don't think is the best team here, right? Like, uh, you know, yeah, remove Kansas, best team you can play, I guess, is the way that I want to phrase that. Like, I would argue that Tennessee and Purdue on the other side of the bracket are both better teams than Marquette is but stylistically I think Marquette is the toughest matchup for Kansas in this tournament and the big reason why is Oso Igadoro. uh and he is just unbelievable if you watched any of the game last night against UCLA uh pretty crazy UCLA was kind of imposing their will defensively they're kind of a, a rugged defensive team they had a couple guards go off and they were up 45-33 at one point and Marquette went on like a 17-0 run at one point, and that's what they can do. They can just kind of hit you in a hurry and eventually won a close game. And Igadero, I, I don't know if it's Igadaro, Igadero, whatever. Uh, he's unbelievable, and, and he was really good last night, kind of being this versatile player all over the floor for them as kind of a center who plays like a wing in a lot of different ways. But they've got uh, multiple guards that can really fill it up, that can shoot threes, and that I think is what's scary, that they can kind of pace and space you um, for a team that, you know, we saw what happened when that was the case against Kentucky didn't go well. And, and I think that'll be kind of the one weakness this year for KU defensively. They have a good two point defense. Uh, they should be good at, you know, rebounding and some of these things. It's going to be what happens if a team can space you out, what happens if a team can stretch you at the five position that becomes a little bit worrisome. And I think Marquette can kind of do those things. Now, as far as the series, uh, Kansas has won the last four. I think this is like the ninth or 10th meeting all time. I believe that includes the uh, 2003 Final Four game where uh, Dwayne Wade put up like a triple-double in the Elite Eight to beat Kentucky, and then Kansas just whomped Marquette in the Final Four. Um, so uh, I'm trying to think the last time you would have played them. I, I don't know. It's it's maybe been a bit here, at least off of the top of my head. But you do have the rematch series, I guess, a little bit of Shaka Smart, right? There were a lot of series with Shaka Smart at Texas against Kansas, and obviously you go back to Shaka Smart – uh, what are the chances they're going to show the VCU highlights on the broadcast? I don't know. Uh, 30%, you know, uh, nobody wants to see it, but uh, probably 30. I don't know, whatever that is. Now, as far as some of the top storylines coming into this game um, for Kansas, this is an opportunity to flex your muscle again and, you know, uh, have an opportunity to kind of beat a team that stylistically you do have worries about and show that once you get to March Madness, because that's the thing you're going to play different styles all along the way if you want to make a final four if you want to win a national championship you have to be able to adjust and play against different styles well that's what this kind of represents an opportunity to do against Marquette and so um, we'll see how Kansas performs in this type of game it's also an opportunity for you know they can pick up another top 20 quad one win through their first whatever five games of the season and then after this one, you'll have another opportunity, regardless of who you play the next game, whether it's Tennessee or Purdue. So a uh, real chance to continue to bolster your resume and continue to show why you're the number one team in the country. For Marquette, if they win this game, right, they're ranked fourth in the people, they're going to start saying, OK, well, if we win this and then we win uh, on Wednesday, we should be the number one team in the country. So that's their storyline kind of coming in about, you know, some of the motivation and everything uh, for them. Uh, obviously, from the Kansas perspective, it seems like KJ Adams is, I'd imagine, going to start in this game after playing like 25 minutes last game coming off the bench. 
Um, so I, I don't think that becomes a storyline or anything like that. Now, uh, as far as the Marquette scouting report, they're coming into this game at 4-0 on the season. They had a, a big win over Northern Illinois, big win over Ryder. Those are to be expected. Their last two have been very impressive. They had the close win with UCLA that they had to get a comeback on. And then the game before that, they won at Illinois, 71-64. to We saw Kansas lose at Illinois in an exhibition game. Now, obviously, exhibition game, so you don't take it as seriously. But that does raise your eyebrow a little bit. The Marquette was able to get that done at Illinois. It's a team that, like I said, they pace in space. They um, Their guards are really good. Tyler Kolek is an All-American point guard. Over 13 points per game, nearly six assists per game. He takes care of the basketball. He's shooting threes at a 56% clip right now, 54% from the floor. And when you look at the matchup between him and Dewan Harris, you feel great about your point guard position too with Dewan Harris. But what Kolek can do is not be bothered by the pressure of Dewan Harris. So normally that big advantage you get there maybe gets nullified a little bit. Maybe it's more of a wash and kind of even between those two guys in this game, and it doesn't become as big of an advantage for you. So then you move down the line. Uh, Cam Jones is kind of their big scorer. He's averaging almost 18 points per game. He actually fouled out of the game last night. Over 50% from the floor, he's shooting 46% from three. So already their, their one-two guard punch is really good. Guys who can both score, facilitate a little bit. Um, so those guys make it happen. David Joplin hit like five threes last night. He's kind of a, a forward wing type, and he's shooting 38% from three. So you have all these guys who can kind of shoot around you. Um, even Ross is shooting like 33% for them. And then that's uh, at the big position where they like to play small a little bit. Um, Joplin, you'll see kind of playing the four at six foot eight. Uh, at times, you might see Igadaro playing at the four if they want to play a bigger lineup. But at times, you'll see the six foot five Chase Ross playing the four. And Igadaro, who is a six foot 11, 235 pound chiseled athlete with speed, agility, and athleticism, is mostly playing the five. Now, every so often, they'll throw out Ben Gold at the five, and he's kind of the the typical, you know, lurking college five man who's your big bruiser inside, 6'11", 245, if they want to play more traditional or if they want to play big and put Igadero uh, at the power forward spot. But also Igadero makes a lot of this work. So as I mentioned, 6'11", 235. There are times where they let him bring up the ball from the inbound pass underneath the hoop. Um, there are times where he initiates the offense. There are times where they ISO him and they clear out with all the spacing and the shooters they have, and it's basically five out, and they just give Igadero the ball, and they say, okay, drive it on the opposing center. It led to foul trouble for Adem Bona last night, who was really good for UCLA. And the thing that's that, I don't know, I'm interested in, like, Igadero has not attempted a three so far this season, right? So, like, teams are playing him out there despite him not shooting a three. Last year, he didn't attempt a three. But you can't give him the space because then you give him a running start and he's such a good athlete that he'll draw a foul or he'll finish around the rim. So it spaces you out. He's also a really good passer from the big man spot. Like he'll, he'll initiate. I even saw at one point last night against UCLA in the second half, they ran a pick and roll where Igadaro, the center, was the the pick man, or he was the, uh, the the basically point guard in the pick and roll. He was the guard who was getting the screen for him and then was was passing off of it. So like, that's going to put a lot of stress on Hunter Dickinson. Can you basically guard like a guard in this game? Or is Kansas just going to say, you know, no, we don't care. We're going to let him get a running start. We're going to let him have space to pass the ball. We're only going to pressure him once he gets to, you know, the free throw line or in the paint or something like that. Um, that'll be interesting to see how KU approaches that. Or does Kansas say, you know, what, what we're actually going to do is we're going to put KJ Adams on Oso Igadoro and maybe have our good athlete against him, even though he's given up some size. He's used to, you know, from last year, he played against guys with bigger height. And then we'll put Hunter Dickinson on David Joplin, which, yes, Joplin can hit threes, but we'll just tell Dickinson, you know, just camp out in the corner with him. I, I don't know how you approach this. I think there's some interesting matchups, but Igadoro becomes a very, very tough uh, kind of matchup for KU. Now, as far as uh, what Marquette does well, what they don't, this is one of the best offenses in the country. They're good at defense. They run fast offensively. They make you slow it down defensively because of how good they are there. Um, really good at avoiding turnovers. Uh, they're really good at two point shooting. They're good at three point shooting and, um, they avoid making silly plays. They avoid running into charges and, and stuff like that. Defensively, they defend the interior really well, not a great rebounding team. So that's going to be something Kansas needs to take advantage in this game. And, uh, you know, they haven't been uh, a great team at, 
even though they're a good two point defense team, they're not getting like a ton of blocks. So with Kansas having some size, even though their two point defense is good, you would think you should be able to still get some advantage there uh, in this game on kind of the two point shooting. They also haven't been a good free throw shooting team. Igadero is shooting like 40% at the free throw line. Maybe you get into a hack a Oso kind of territory in this game if you really need it. All right, let's continue on with our matchups of the game players to watch. This is Locked on Jayhawks. This episode of the show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you've access to the best qualified candidates available, which is why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs, helping find the right people for your team faster and for free. Add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. It's that easy to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. You want to add that right team member, make your life a little easier during the holiday season and get 2024 started on the right foot where, you know, basically like six weeks away from 2024. Small businesses rate LinkedIn number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post a job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Matchups of the game for Kansas and Marquette. Again, if you want to get the uh, KU Shamanad recap, maybe you're watching the Chiefs game and watching all the receivers drop everything, you can uh, check that out on our show as well with Locked on Jayhawks on uh, anywhere you get your podcasts and on YouTube. So uh, as I've kind of talked about with Igadero, I, I think number one is trying to figure out schematically what you want to do against him. Do you want to play drop off him and just let him have a running start and passing the ball? Do you want to play tight on him? Uh, what does that mean? Does that mean more minutes for Parker Brown? Does it mean KJ Adams defending him? Does it mean Hunter Dickinson doing this or that, right? Like, I think there's a lot of strategy in how you go about it and how you play them. And then just in terms of KU defending ball screens, what Marquette's going to run a lot of them. They're going to run a lot of shooters off ball screens, off ball and on ball. You have to be able to stick with those guys and stay with them. Otherwise, they'll get hot from three with a lot of their good shooters, especially Cam Jones, Tyler Kolek, and uh, will certainly make you pay from the outside. I think in general, the three point shooting becomes an interesting matchup in this game. KU is coming off another bad three point shooting game, four of 19 against Chaminade after a bad Kentucky three point shooting game. But the first two games of the season were excellent three point shooting games. When you look at Marquette, good three point shooting team, they're shooting it at about 36%, but they're also shooting it at a high volume, which makes it a math game in this one, right? If Marquette goes 10 of, you know, 27 from three and you go four of 18, that's a lot of points you have to make up for in other ways. So the the kind of three-point shooting, the closer that Kansas can keep this to being equal in this game, the more it favors Kansas because it should be on paper an advantage for Marquette. So the more you can make it a wash, the better that is for Kansas. I talked about rebounding being a big key for Kansas in this game. Uh, Marquette is only 244th in the country in offensive rebounding rate. And to be clear, I, th I think the offensive rebounding rate one is more about I don't know that they send a lot of numbers at it. I think they're more concerned with getting back in transition defense, which is pretty indicative of the fact that like um, they have one of the, the slowest average possession lengths against defensively because they're not giving up quick, easy baskets, which means you're not going to be able to score a lot in transition. So you have to be able to win in the half court. There's another matchup of this game. Um, but one way to win the half court could be grabbing some extra rebounds. Now, Marquette, also not a great defensive rebounding team to this point in the season. Uh, right now, they're... Um, really struggling on that end. But the problem is Kansas hasn't been a great offensive rebounding team. But Marquette is 281st in the country. Or I'm sorry, they are 238th in the country in uh, defensive rebounding rate. So uh, again, 238th in the country, not a great defense rebounding team. Kansas, though, is only 226th in offensive rebounding rate. I've thought this could be a good offensive rebounding team. Hunter Dickinson, good rebounder. More of a good defensive rebounder, though. Kevin McCuller, good rebounder. Again, more defensive rebounding. But K.J. Adams, better offensive rebounder than he has been a defensive rebounder. I thought this could be at least a decent offensive rebounding team. Maybe it starts this game because you might have to do it playing more in the half court. Uh, Kansas is 83rd in defensive rebounding rate, so they've actually done a pretty decent job on that end. Um, this is something you have to win in this game because they are preventing, presenting uh, an advantage. KU's third in two-point offense, by the way, in the country. They're also second in two-point defense in the country. Marquette is really good at spacing you out. So how do you defend on that? 
And then also, even though Marquette has a pretty good two-point defense, they don't really get a lot of blocked shots. I think Kansas still can take advantage of that in this game, and, and that's a matchup that I actually like uh, for Kansas in this one. And then can either team turn over the other? Like Kansas's defense is not turning teams over early on in the season. They're doing a pretty good job of holding on the ball. They've been excellent at passing. Marquette's not turning the ball over this season. They've done a pretty good job of turning teams over at the other end. Both teams like to play fast offensively, but Marquette does like to get back in transition. So it'll be interesting to see how the tempo kind of impacts and affects uh, into this game and I guess who can uh, kind of come out on top in in, in that area um, uh, the player matchups I, I think a lot of interesting ones in this game so let's finish up with that here with Locked on Jayhawks prize picks is our sponsor here with Locked on Jayhawks the most fun you can have winning up to 25 times your money this football or college basketball season you just pick Two players, up to six if you really want. You boost your odds the more you go. And you pick more or less on their projected stats, place your entry. So you'll be able to get, you know, Kansas Marquette later today. You can, you know, get Hunter Dickinson more points or more points plus rebounds plus assists. You can even combine that with an NFL pick for a Thursday night football game. You can really mix and match however you want. And that's the cool part about it. It's customized to your experience. They have quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types. What make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app? Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college with code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Finishing things up with locked on Jayhawks with our players to watch, matchups to watch for Kansas in this game. Now, as far as the player matchups to watch, uh, I mean, it, it's it's obviously the Hunter Dickinson, Oso Iguodaro one, as I've kind of profiled here. Like, that's kind of the key to unlocking their offense in a lot of ways. And defensively, he's a really switchable player that has been a really good defender. Now, he's really chiseled and muscular and strong. How is he going to deal with the the size of Hunter Dickinson? Who's got three inches on him and, you know, 30, 40 pounds on him. That'll be very interesting to see how those two kind of go up against each other. Can one get the other in foul trouble? Maybe right. that's, that's a top one for me, but I, I think from the broadcast perspective, the matchup they're going to be most interested in, and, and this one's right up there too, is Dewan Harris versus Tyler Kolek. You have an All-American guard for Marquette and Tyler Kolek. You have, I think an All-American worthy guard in Dewan Harris. Who knows if he gets there because, you know, sometimes it ends up being, oh, but you're only averaging 10 points per game, even if your impact is that good, uh, which we know. But, you know, we'll, we'll see if he gets on there. Nonetheless, um, these, in my opinion, are two of the best point guards in the country, right? And so you have the matchup of both these guys that are smart. They're good passers. They can hit open threes when you leave them open. There's a lot of similarities between Dwan Harris and Tyler Kolek. Kolek may be more of a complete score, at least a more consistent score, because we've seen Dwan be able to have those games. I think Dwan an even better passer. Kolek a better rebounder. Uh, Dwan probably a better defender. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun with, with that matchup between those two guys kind of uh, instigating the offense and everything like that. Uh, the other one here is, you know, so I, I don't know how Kansas is going to go about, I guess, defending um, Cam Jones, who's their leading point scorer and, you know, shooting 46% from three. Cam Jones is technically their three-man. He's 6'5", 200 pounds. So hypothetically, you could put your two on him. But they play a lot of Stevie Mitchell, Sean Jones, who hit a big three last night at the two. So I'm assuming you're going to get Kevin McCuller on Cam Jones. And that becomes a very interesting matchup. This is one of those games where if you said, you know, what, what would you rather have from Kevin McCuller in this game? 20 points? or 12 points and great defense on Cam Jones, you're taking the 12 points and the great defense on Cam Jones, right? Um, obviously, it would help if he has 20 points and, and can do a lot offensively, but he's going to have his hands full on the defensive end. Jones moves around a lot uh, off the ball. He can make shots off the dribble. He, he's just an all-around scorer and shooter. He's 12 of 26 from three-point range so far this season. He's also shooting 60% on twos, so he can make a pay there. Uh, whether it's in the mid range or driving to the bucket, he's just a really good player and a really good scorer. So Kevin McCuller has been excellent so far. He just had his second straight triple double. Uh, he's going to have to get it done on the defensive end of the game this time against Marquette. Those are kind of the three big ones here. Um, but this is definitely a game where I feel like the bench, you need somebody to step up. I'm not saying everybody off the bench for KU has to step up and get it going at the same time. That might be unreasonable. But like one of Furphy or Timberlake is going to have to probably hit a couple threes in this game or Jamari McDowell. 
pick your poison, right? One of them is going to have to get that done. Parker Brown might have to play a bigger role in this game. If, if Iguodaro gets Hunter Diggins in in foul trouble, that becomes an immediate threat. And then you're going to have to say, okay, who else is going to score for us on the offensive end, right? There are a lot of avenues that KU could go in this one. As far as players that I think could have big games for KU, you know, I, I do profile Hunter Dickinson. I, I do have my concerns about how KU is going to defend and, and how, you know, he's going to be put into the blender defensively. But I think offensively, he should have an advantage. I think rebounding wise, he should have an advantage. So he should be able to put up big numbers uh, in this game once again. Then uh, you look at the other spot. I mean, uh, last night, UCLA, a couple of their guards had really good games. Maybe this and, and they, they were athletic young players, like both of them were underclassmen. Maybe this is a game where we could see El Marco Jackson have one of his better games. If it is more of an up and down, both teams play fast tempos offensively. Again, Marquette does get back a lot defensively in transition, but both teams play fast offensively. Maybe that would be to the liking of El Marco Jackson. All right, that'll do it for this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast. You can hit us up on our YouTube feed and like and subscribe to the show. We'll see you next time with Locked on Jayhawks. We'll give you a recap very late tonight or uh, early tomorrow morning with KU Marquette right here with LOJ.